In lab 05, we are going to do the firewall exploration lab, the part one. We need to complete a uh, task one and a task two. Here is the official description. Okay, first let's set up the environment. Here in the files, we have kernel module and a packet filter. This is a packet filter. Kernel module. In the router, this is a setup block file for the router. This volume is a shared folder between the virtual machine and the containers as we did before. In this lab, we are going to uh, use uh, kernel modules and uh, IP tables to set up firewalls as we uh, discussed during the lecture. So please uh, read this uh, lab menu carefully by yourself. The environment. Here is a network we are going to use in this lab. Build this container, build this image. Bring up the container. Okay, totally we have. Uh, File containers, a loader, host uh, 2, host 3, host 1, and host A. Now you check the figure in the lab menu. Here we have two network 192.168.60.0 you see we have dot file dot six dot seven dot file dot six dot seven host one two three now the router we have a router here host A we also have a host A. However, for the attacker, the attacker is the virtual machine. You know this uh, IP address. Most of the tasks we will carry out on the host machine, this uh, virtual machine, and uh, this inside this. Uh, Here, I didn't discuss that uh, 
shared folder, but we know that from our previous labs. Task 1. Implementing a simple firewall. Uh, please read this uh, text uh, carefully. To implement a simple firewall, there are two mechanisms loadable kernel module LKM and uh, net filter. Uh, task 1.a We are going to practice how to compare a kernel module, how to load it, how to remove it, and how to check it. It's uh, provided in the files folder as we just checked. The kernel module, we have a uh, hello.c and a uh, uh, make file. Uh, open with a text editor. Okay, this uh, make file help us how to compare the kernel module. Hello.c. We discussed this uh, structure of this uh, kernel module during the lecture. It's uh, quite simple. Uh, module init and a module exit. Just, uh, two functions. One for the for entering into the module, the other one for exiting from the module. Initialization clean up. We will be able to see this uh, information printed into the kernel buffer. Go to files. Just type uh, maker. You'll see a uh, kernel module is uh, built. Hello.ko. To clean it, just type uh, make clean. Uh, we will clean the at the end of this uh, task. Now, for all the modules inside the system, you can use ls model list all the modules. Right, you can see uh, all the uh, current modules inside the kernel. For example, uh, sound core or to process uh, sound, which box guest, the box SS, SF. So we are only interested in the kernel model we built to insert the model into the kernel uh, in ins mod followed by the kernel name. I would like to uh, open another terminal tab, run the D message to check the kernel buffer. Okay, have a look to see how to use it. Okay. Specify the support log levels and so on. The kernel message support log facilities. And you can show it in real time. Can clear create dash c to show it in uh, real time. There is a dash e show it in real time. Show only the kernel message dash k. Here are all those messages. If we only want to show kernel message. Dash K, right? 
the loss of most of these uh, messages are from kernel. We can also clean or clear those uh, clear these uh, messages. To clear them, we need to run sudo. There we go again. Okay, now uh, it's uh, cleaned. We can use a uh, dash k dash e to show it uh, in real time. Any uh, kind of message uh, popped up, it, uh, it will print it out here. That dash e for real time. Let's see real time, show local time and time data in a readable format. This shows that I'm not show it. I want to show it uh, continuously to see which one is used to show uh, show it continuously. Dash W, wait for a new message. It looks like this one is what we want, not this uh, dash E real time. It shows local time and time data in readable format. So we use a dash w to wait for a new message. Okay, it'll wait here. Now let's uh, insert our module. This module hello.ko. Okay, it's inserted. You check the message. Then you see uh, these informations. Hello world. This one. Print out by the print k by this uh, sentence. We also have some uh, other warnings from the kernel. It says, "Oh, hello module license not specified," and tends to kernel. Disabling log debugging due to uh, kernel tent. Module verification failed. There is no signature. It's fine, it's just a simple kernel to show you how to compile it, insert it, and remove it, and check it. If you want to learn more, you can uh, check the reference listed on our companion website, Linux kernel uh, programming. Okay, now we can use a LS model to find uh, hello model. Right, you see our uh, hello model is in the list of the LS model. I just uh, grab the hello. To remove it, sudo so rm model hello. Just follow the name. Right now it's remote, you can also double check. Right, we get nothing from that list. When we re remove the model, we will see uh, this information printed into the kernel buffer. Here you see by bye bye world. Okay, this is how do we uh, compare insert list and uh, remove kernel module and uh, check the message is printed into the kernel buffer. If you want to develop drivers for hardware for Linux, you need to know the kernel development. This just show you a very simple example. And this is uh, task 1.a. Here it explains the source code and the make file and uh, tell you how to uh, insert it, how to 
list it and how to remove it, how to check the message that I just uh, demonstrated. You can also use model info to show information about a Linux uh, kernel module. Since the hello kernel model is already uh, removed, we can check out the models. Model info. For example, check this uh, Uh, you see uh, the information of the uh, video model. You see the file name while it's uh, located and the location. License, GPL, description, the video driver, author, and so on. So to develop a driver like uh, this uh, video driver, you need a uh, lot of knowledge. Here you see it has a signature, right? a SIG key, SIG hash algorithm, a signature, and so on. The signature. Okay, the how is the signature. Now have some, you know, also have some uh, parameters can pass to this uh, kernel module, for example, brightness, switch, enable, allow duplicates, and so on. You can also find how to uh, design parameters for a kernel module in Linux kernel uh, programming guide listed in our companion website here. can find uh, detailed information from this uh, Linux kernel model programming guide. For a simple uh, hello.kl, hello, we don't have signature, signature keys and all these informations. No problems. We can uh, just have a look. Hello. Model hello not found. Can you use that uh, list model to find our hello? You see our hello is uh, only in inserted. However, this model info cannot cannot find it, which means in order to uh, let the system see the information from our model, we still need uh, to register information into the system. We don't, uh, we didn't do that. So how to uh, put information? Uh, please check that uh, kernel program guide. Remove this model. Okay, that's it. Task 1.a now for task 1.b. Implement a simple firewall using this uh, net filter. As we discussed during the lecture, this is a uh, kernel module. It uses uh, hooks to hook other uh, kernel modules. Hooking to the net filter, how to do it. Uh, example is a provided packet field. Okay, now let's open the source code. CD into the packet uh, packet field. Uh, this is a new make file, right? You see this one, seed filter. Oh, let's close the previous two. You can make 
to build the model, make clean to clean it, make uh, ins to insert the model, make rm to remove this uh, model. And it's uh, source code. Two folks structure are two folks structures are defined. Here yeah, block UDP print in information. We have two uh, functions and in this uh, register field uh, we create initialize those two focus one used to this uh, print inf is uh, use this uh, hook number local out for this uh, block UDP is a fork in this place post reloading we discussed uh, during the lecture what's a lookout and what's post uh, loading so you can check uh, the slides which I think also there are some explanations here line 1, 2, 3, so go ahead to check the explanation and here's a register the hook yeah, the first four line initialize the hook here is a hook number of the hook place inside the net filter the register uh, field to register these two field two field uh, here we use this function to register two focus and then remove field to remove the two focus and register net hook So that uh, register function, register field, field uh, serve as the module entrance and the remove field uh, serve as exit for this module. Okay, we can use the same way to compare it and uh, insert it and uh, test it. So this is a uh, net field uh, module. It's a purpose for the First one for that uh, block UDP. Here it block this uh, gap. We know part number thirty three is for DNS, right? DNS uh, query and DNS server is eight 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 eight. In our previous lab, this 4 8 does not work. I think it still does not work if you uh, try to uh, pin 8888. Eight, eight. It's not reachable, so let's use 8.8.4.4 uh, .4 as we did before. 4.4.4 is reachable from our network so we change it to a dot four dot four you may choose any uh, reachable DNS server here it uh, Give us a note the register function and the unregister function. They are different in Ubuntu 20.04 and Ubuntu 16.04 because we are using a 20.04, so we use this one, the second one. Here are the hook functions. The print info will it print out the information of the packet. Here, the packet is a uh, hold in this pointer, or the fork location is printed out right? local in, local out, pre loading, post loading, forward, 
this is impossible we, we only have a file because and the protocol UDP, TCP, SMP and other stuff you can check in the IP header here some uh, source address, destination address and the protocol will be printed out in the kernel buffer so we can check the information in the kernel buffer Okay, for those uh, headers, those structure, they're all defined in this, in the head files put in this folder, yeah, in this folder. For example, IP header, IP HDR, TCP header, UDP header, SMP header. If you use them, you need these uh, head files, IP, TCP, UDP, SMP, dot H. Here, you see we have IP TCP UDP. If you want to use the ICMP, you can uh, add the header, the ICMP.h. And I save it. Now, this one try to block UDP packets if they are that destination address. IP is this uh, eight 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 dot eight destination port number fifty three. This means blocking the DNS query to the name server. How do we generate a DNS query to test? These uh, packets are blocked by our filter. So this is how it's implemented as we just discussed. Uh, the server and the port number here, port number 33 IP address e equals uh, the, pre the, the one we defined. Here, it uh, converts the IPv4 address from dotted decimal to a 32 bit number using this function. So, we will be able to compare it here. This IP HDR. So, if we to match, we drop that packet. Otherwise, uh, we accept it. Now, to test it, we use the dig, digger command at uh, the DNS server IP, then followed by, uh, by uh, FQDN. How do we call it? Fully qualified domain name. This is a print info function. This is a task tool. Here we need to compare this first, then compare this one, then compare uh, this one. So we have three uh, subtask and uh, task two point. Uh, this and this task. So one point uh, B. Yeah, you can check here. One point B, so you need to complete one, two, three, and one, two, three is so this is here, one, two, and uh, three. So for the first one, just uh, compare the sample code and the test, it uh, blocked all the DNS queries go to this uh, DNS server. So let's uh, test here. I uh, open another. Dig. Actually, we can pin that www.example.com. You'll see. That is a website. There is a server called this one, right? We get the IP address. If we use a dig at 
h dot h because uh, the four eights are not reachable and we cannot get all results so wait a moment it will time out right, uh, connection uh, terminal out Four dollar four. Oh, see this worked. Four dollar four worked. And get the uh, IP address. Is it exactly uh, what when we pin it? Right? Okay, now we can uh, go ahead and uh, compare it. This place, sometimes we make uh, a kernel module is generated. Now let's insert it. Double check. Let me see this seed filter. You can also see from this uh, the uh, message registering filters. Here's the source code in the entrance. Here, registering filters. In the Exit, you will say the filters have been removed. I right, know it's uh, inserted. What we are going to do now? Uh, you will also see some information are printed out. Right? This is uh, a local out from this place, this place, uh, UTP. Actually, it's printed out by this uh, print info function here. Local out. And then we print out. Fork information and the prototype UDP and uh, IP address or source to destination. Right, you we see all this uh, information source to destination and the protocol and the hook where it's uh, forked, uh, which hook is uh, triggered. We want to see uh, that a dig was dropped. Uh, that a DNS credit was dropped. We can dig it again. Right? Dig this one. Press enter. Then see the message. Do you see it? Dropping. Dropping. Right? That dropped. Port number 53 to that IP address uh, with the UDP. Now on this side, get a timeout. Because it's dropped by our filter. If it's just try three times, send all three packs and it dropped. So, which means our filter worked as expected. Now, let's uh, remove this uh, module. Okay, it's removed. You can check this is the message. The filters are being removed. Okay, this subtask one is completed. Now subtask two. Hook the print info function to all of the net field hooks file. That field focus. Now, how do we do that? We just modify this uh, seed field. Make a clean. OK. 
uh, we can use this uh, seed filter as our template for our second one request seed print dot c and open it seed print now for the make file we only want to make this uh, seed print so we can comment out that line Now, totally, we need a file folks, right? So, we need uh, fox3 hook4 hook file. Now, we can use this uh, either ask us to hook print info to all those file hooks. So don't need to change anything for this uh, print info. What we need to do is to change the place here. Print if already give us an uh, example, right? So change this one, also change it to print if. There's a local out, there's a uh, post routing. It asks us. Focus. This hook place places. Right? We'll copy them. Can you see and paste here? Totally, we have a firewall then. We use them as a comments. This is a lookout. This is a post routing. see and the paste here preloading hook one look again Pay attention. Here is our hook one. Now uh, here we change it out hook two. This one change out to hook three. And forward. Remember here. Look out. Hook four. Please stop check if you have error in your source code. You may. Once it's uh, compiled and successfully inserted into your Linux kernel, it may uh, crash your virtual machine.
then post hook file the local out hook for the forward hook three local in hook two preloading hook one Uh, Ctrl S, save it. Now, this is a uh, register uh, filters with register file focus. Well, once you exit the kernel model, we well, also need to, need to unregister all the net focus. Firefox. We register the Firefox. So you also need to unregister uh, all these Firefox. Can I save it? I think that's all. Now let's uh, build, insert, it and test it. So tap make. To make a seed print kill. Remember, you modified this uh, make file. I can close this field, uh, seed field. Don't see. Uh, this function is okay to leave it here, but we didn't use it. Right? We only use uh, this uh, print inf. Now let's uh, insert the module. You can uh, check here. Filters are being removed. You may also want to uh, add some information. For example, this one is a seed field, seed printer to make a clearer. We may add it here at the beginning and. Uh, And the entrance and the exit. Here's entrance. Seed filter. Oh, sorry. Seed print. Connor is save it. Okay, let's uh, rebuild it. To make. Okay, it's a rebuild. Now let's insert the model. Okay, it's inserted. You can check here. Seed print. Registering filters. Uh, now, how do we generate uh, some information and uh, see the printout, see all the packets, the uh, hookers, right? For example, local in, local out, we can, for example, we can use this dig, the dig is generated from our machine, so we, we see uh, Look out. Look out, preloading, look in. When it uh, come back, you will see a uh, preloading and look in those information. From this place, right here. Look out, post loading, preload, 
loading. When we dig it, this is the one. This one we generated uh, from our machine to that uh, DNS server, then posting. When the come back uh, from that DNS server to our machine, we put it loading, come in, log in. We didn't see a uh, forward. Forward is usually in the uh, happen in a router, but uh, here it's not run on a router. We run on a virtual machine. So it's in order to see it, we need a uh, run inside the model on a router. But we see except that forward, we see all out for uh, hooks are triggered. It asks you uh, un to explain at what condition where each of the hook function be invoked as I uh, just explained. Okay, now let's uh, remove this uh, model. Okay, it's a remote. You can see here, seed print filters are being removed. The third task implement two more hooks to achieve the following preventing other computers to pin the virtual machine, preventing other computers to turn net into the virtual machine. And please implement two different uh, hook functions but register them to the same net field hook. You should decide what hook to use. Before it comes to our virtual machine, so the hook can be used is either this pre-loading or the local in. Right? You can choose the let's choose the pre-loading. Telnet default port number is TCP port number 23. To test it, you can start the container, go to that uh, 10.9.0 file and uh, log in into a uh, telnet into the uh, into our virtual machine. We can test it first. We pin a test first to make it uh, work. Then we insert our filter and you will see both command will fail because we want to prevent that pin and that telnet to our virtual machine. Here an important notice Please pay attention. If you have an error in your kernel module, it will crash your virtual machine. In that case, just uh, restart your virtual machine. Okay, it asks us go to this place, go to this uh, host A, right? And open a new tab. Docker shell. Here we can pin that 10.9.1. This is a virtual machine. And it worked. You can also tear net. Seed DES. Uh, it worked. See, this is uh, our virtual machine, host machine. Exit. Okay. We just uh, checked. We can pin our virtual machine and turn that into our virtual machine. And our subtask 3 is to create a kernel module to hook into the net filter to block those two uh, attempts, the pin and the telnet. Again, we can use that template. First, let's clean. We call that seed filter. Use this one, 
Now let's give it a name. Just quite a simple. Text uh, editor. Close this seed print to see the make file. We also need to change it. Seed block dot off and let's save it. Okay, we uh, add uh, the task. One is to block pin, right? Pin to VM, to our virtual machine. Our virtual machine is uh, 10.9.0 block pin. Other one is uh, block telnet. Can change this one. Quite uh, block TCP. Maybe we just leave it as a template, put it here. So we can copy it. Can you see? Can we paste here? So we just add two uh, hooks. Hook three, hook four. Certainly, you can uh, just reuse hook one and hook two. Uh, get rid of this uh, block UDP and get a print. So let's uh, just use these two. Reuse those two. What's the requirement? Implement two more hooks to achieve the following. Okay, I need a two more. Here, this is a uh, blocking your DP to H dot H dot for dot for per number very straight. Now, with that as a template, we block block the pin to our VM. Pin it generate a SMP packet. So block SMP. Now the header, we can uh, get the SMP header. Uh, here is the UDP header. Change it to SMP header. I see MP header. The MP header, the IP layer, header. then the transport, current, transport layer, and ICMP header. Here we also need to change this one, ICMP. We don't have port number for ICMP. Now we do have the IP address. Yeah, it's the IP address we zero to one. Here get the IP header and uh, convert the IP before address from body decimal to say to bit binary. Protocol now if the protocol is ICMP. I CMP. Here it says try to uh, get the UDP header. We, we use the IC SMP H. Here SMP. Now we check the destination IP address if it equals our virtual machine's IP address. 
and uh, no, we don't have UDP uh, port number. So this one we don't use it. You may want to check the SMP head contents. It updates uh, uh, not necessary. For example, you check the type. For example, the type uh, SMP request. How do you find the SMP uh, type request? Here we block uh, all the SMP message. As long as uh, SMP we block it. For any uh, SMP uh, packet, if we only block that pin, we, we need to uh, specify it. Right? Here we didn't see uh, information about to specify. SMP type, SMP type. Type zero, type eight is echo. Echo reply zero. So which one is uh, echo request and reply? request so it looks like this uh, it is echo request echo reply tab zero echo reply so we want to uh, find uh, type now we need to find how those fields are defined in that SMP header structure we need to find it how it's defined SMP head structure reference. In the Linux kernel. We have a type of code here checksum. Here scroll down, you can see a uh, echo reply zero. Echo request is eight. Uh, here is for the for the tab here for the code. Here for redirect. So use this type, right? Okay, now ICMP header type equals request 8 or we use this name when I save it in this case we drop it So any uh, SMP uh, request to our virtual machine, they will be dropped. For others, we accept it. Accept it. We uh, need to uh, block a uh, tenant. Blocking internet to our virtual machine. 
No, telnet. You wonder where is there a telnet had had. Telnet runs on TCP. Port number twenty three. As I described here. Uh, to TCP port number twenty three. So we block those uh, TCP packets with uh, destination port number twenty three and the destination IP address to our virtual machine. So now the port number twenty three. The telnet. Here SMP change TCP. TCP oops. TCP header, TCP uh, edge or header. So this is a structure name. You can check uh, the head file. The TCP dot H and uh, Linux folder. Again, converts IP address from dotted decimal to set to bit uh, binary. Now the protocol this time is uh, TCP. We get the TCP header. TCP edge, TCP uh, header. Now IP address equals this IP address here destination address D A D D O destination uh, IP address. Now for this one, we use that destination port number IP edge. Now that destination port number, how do we specify it? Check that uh, block UDP. Here and here, this one. Octanet. Now this is the TCP edge. RTSPH. Okay, what are the packets headed to our virtual machine to port number 23 that will be dropped? So, this is how do we block the net to our virtual machine? Double check TCP header. Here TCP H. Is this one the available name? TCP destination port number. Okay, now let's uh, compile it. Before we compile it, uh, we still need. Uh, we added two uh, hooks, right? So we also need to uh, add them to the hook one, hook two. Oh, it's hook three and hook four. Let's use hook three and hook four. Here, hook three. We want to block SMP. Uh, Preloading.
or hook 3 we want to use for box ICMP. Oh, I didn't change it. The telnet. This one is a uh, block SMP. This one we call a block telnet. Hook four, block telnet. Again, we hook it into this uh, preloading. And I save it. Uh, hook three, hook four. I will focus into uh, this uh, pre-routing. For the register, for the unregister, we need to unregister both folks folks 3 and folks 4 when we exit the kernel module. Can I save it? I think uh, that's all. They remove field, uh, remember remove the two extra hookers in the register field uh, you also need to uh, register these two extra hookers as MP block telnet. This print info we just left there. Here is our block connect. This one is our block uh, ICMP. The previous uh, block UDP we left there. I created two hooks, hooks three and four. four. Also include the header ICMP.h. When we save it, now let's uh, compile it. I have an error. So what the error it is? And declare the identifier is reported only once for each function it appears. So let's see which line we get. On this place, there's a port. The port is not defined. Line six two in the seed block dot C in this uh, block SMP. Line six two here the port we don't have a port, so we need to get rid of this port. For SMP, there's no port. Okay, remember save it. Go back and uh, make it again. Okay, we have this seed block dot kill. Let's insert it. We 
can check the output right, registering filters. So this is not a good idea. We didn't add a seed block. So let's add store remove mod seed block. Okay, it's removed. Right, see the filters up in removed. We want to make the clearer the registering. We add a seed block. As exit, Ctrl S save it. Just make it again. Insert. Now this time we check uh, see the block registering filters. Okay, this these two filters, the two extra filters, are supposed to uh, block that pin and block that uh, telnet, right? So we can pin it to have a look. Pin, check the output here, drop. Right, those pin are dropped. So, can you see stop it? But we have an uh, error. Pin is not a uh, SMP. I can you see stop it. Here, it shows UDP. Pin is ICMP, not a UDP. So, because we copied that uh, uh, block UDP, we didn't modify it yet. So in this uh, block, here, this one we need to change it to uh, SMP. Can I save it? We see it worked as expected, right? We just have a manual problem. It does not matter. Check the output. To the target. So our telnet also failed. Right? It's still trying. But I still have a minor problem. This should be a TCP. Uh, let's change the TCP. He just drop in the one, one, two, three. It's join. It's okay. You can see stop it. You want to see the the packets are filled. You can see stop it. Here is TCP. Going to save it. We can make it more clearer. Here the port is destination port. Here is the destination IP. So which means you can make it clearer. D port destination port. Here dropping packages. Destination. Certainly for that uh, SMP, you can also add uh, a destination here, right? Can you save it? Okay, then you can recompare and run it, and you will see the output uh, are more uh, explainable. Here, this uh, output will be more self explanatable. Remember, every time once you are done, remove the model. Right. 
Right, you see, uh, at the end, it says seed block field has all been uh, removed. Okay, let's continue our tasks. We just complete this uh, subtask. Um, let's go to task uh, two, experimenting with uh, stateless firewall rules using the net filter. Okay, please uh, read this uh, description by yourself as you know uh, net filter not only refer to its uh, kernel port X tables, it also refer to its user space uh, program. We discussed this uh, during the lecture. Using the IP tables, you can use this main IP tables when it's uh, hard to use it. Now, we don't need the D message, so let's uh, control C, stop it. Okay, let's, uh, let's uh, run from here. IP tables. You can see uh, the menu IP tables. IP tables is before IP6 tables for IPv6. The administration tools for IPv4, IPv6, packet filtering, and uh, network address translation. The synopsis, how to do it. Table and so on. So you can uh, read this uh, by yourself. Descriptions and let's uh, quit it. Type Q and quit it. This is how do you find the detailed help? Uh, My app tables certainly you can find online. There are lots of tutorials. In a typical uh, app tables command, we add a row or remove a row from one of the chains in one of the tables. Here are the tables. Field, uh, net, mango, and the chains and the functionality. We discussed this uh, during the lecture. This is a general form. How do we specify? Uh, IP tables command dash t specifies the table, then specifies the chain, specifies the rule, specifies the action. Here is a example. We can uh, practice these examples in the terminal window here. List all the rules in a table without line number. IP tables dash t. This is a net table. Dash l dash n dash l list all the uh, rules. Cannot open this file. We need a sudo to run this uh, command. Currently, you can see uh, the rules. There are lots of rules set up by Docker here. Pre routing policy accept in this chain. And this is uh, set up by Docker or source destination address uh, type. In this input chain, this empty output chain, we have a similar rule. This not, which means the destination, not this one, or any uh, addresses other than this one. 
post loading chain docker so as uh, emphasized in this level menu please uh, pay attention when you execute command some commands may uh, corrupt the rules set up by docker then your containers will not work as expected list all the rules in the table with the line numbers app tables this time we use a field table dash l dash n line number now you see uh, these rules are labeled with the line numbers 1, 2, 3, 4, 1 and so on to delete a row in the input chain of the field table this is my I just checked my field table here I just checked my field table the input chain here's the input chain I have nothing here forward chain we have a seven rows we have 14 rows output chain and we some have some extra chain docker dash user docker dash isolation stage that's to created by docker so how about we run this command inside our container for example this container this container is uh, what this container I use is host A because it's already root so we can uh, type those uh, commands dash t table field dash l and to list out the rules here yeah, now this is a uh, cleaner right inside this uh, containers input chain forward chain uh, output chain or uh, empty now we can add some rules and uh, drop them here you use this uh, IP tables dash t field to drop the rule number two in the input chain of the field table type like this dash t table dash d mean delete here drop all the incoming packets that satisfy the rule dash t field dash a input and input open to the input chain the rule satisfy the rule the target dash j job the action job it oh this is a review of the syntax of app tables there is a note you need to pay attention the talk relies on the IP tables to manage the network it creates for example this command is very dangerous if you want you are uh, using it to delete all the rules in the net it could corrupt uh, uh, doc system and that way you, you need to uh, power off all those containers and remove them and uh, power up them again there's a note uh, it's uh, fine to do this in this uh, field table doc does not do does not touch this table uh, in the container you see a uh, the table uh, field uh, or empty uh, the net table tables dash t net dash l now you see uh, the net table docker used in po post loading output 
here code loading and also add some uh, docker customized chain docker output output input here the preloading input out, uh, empty but this output we have docker use uh, app table to create a uh, virtualized net network or to separate those uh, virtual networks okay, these are the tasks we need to do in task 2 we have three tasks so I need to complete these three uh, subtasks 2.8 protecting the router so we need to uh, dock share into the router and uh, follow this uh, guide protecting the router in this time we will set up rules to prevent outside machines from accessing the router machine except pin we just execute the following apptapes command on the router container and try to access it from the host area so we open two uh, containers this is the host layer as I just checked out I also need to uh, open a shell to the router uh, this is the router before we set up the firewall then try uh, pin it right? from accessing the except pin which means you block everything except the pin yeah we can pin the router the router IP as a router it has a two interfaces it has two IP addresses right. you can see it's a uh, IP address is another zero and uh, is another one this interface is interface to that uh, inner network this one to the outer network when you check the image here the image at the beginning this to the inside network through this uh, interface outside through this interface this IP so for this outside one interface name is Ether0 uh, you don't need to uh, care about this part Right now let's go back to this task access we can try a uh, telnet right? use telnet to sell uh, sell as an example let's see this uh, ping worked how about I ping the other interface this one since it's a router we should be able to pin it right? here yeah, but you don't pin this one no, I want to pin what I want to pin is this the interface and uh, connect to the inside network it worked oh, can you see great okay we can also use a telnet 
turn it to turn it into this uh, loader. Seed DS. Right here we can uh, access it. Exit, quit it. Before we run those uh, app table commands, we can paint, we can uh, turn at it. Now it asks us to execute those uh, app tables command and uh, try it again, paint it and uh, turn at it. The turn at server is running on all the containers a called, called seed was created on them with the pattern of DS as I just uh, demonstrated. Report your observation and explain the purpose of each rule. Here we need to set up these uh, rules in the router. Yeah, I'm inside this router. IP tables dash a the input chain dash p protocol ICMP ICMP uh, type echo request this is a pin request right for the pin request we accept it because we block all other uh, services except this pin accept here it didn't specify the table by default which table it will be added so let's Right for it will be added to the field table. IP tables dash T field dash L. Let's list out this field table. Currently the field table is empty, nothing. So it's a good idea to check it before you modify it. IP tables dash A input dash P Dash G accept it. You can use this uh, check command to see it. Right? You see this SMP row is added here. Accept, target accept, SMP protocol source any source any destination with smp type 8 uh, request now for the uh, echo reply we also accept it right. the second command to accept the reply which means let the reply go back to the accessor and we set the default rules for output to be job and input to be job which means other protocols cannot access it or router output to specify the default rule dash p on this output chain job job everything app tables input chain job everything now you check the table Here, the you said see that default rules are not added into this uh, field table. They are just default policy. So where are those uh, default policy? Here, the default policy dash p is says policy. Right? 
not put a job. Input policy is also a job by default. Here, forward is the default policy is uh, accept. You can compare with this one. Before we set up those uh, default policy, you see the output is accept. The input default policy is also accept. If you change it to a job, and this two command you change it to job. Now, let's uh, test it. First is ping, it should work. And the telnet should be uh, denied. Here, bring up this pin. Right, this pin uh, does not work. Can you see? Stop it. On the internet, I just say uh, try. Also stop. You may wonder whether we can see any uh, kernel information from here. This information or the information we got in our virtual machine. And you see the, the kernel message, they share the same kernel buffer between these uh, containers and the uh, virtual machine. And we didn't see uh, any new messages printed out here. It's still trying, I just stop it. Can you see? So, we know the four rules completed our task, prevent outside machine from accessing the machine except pin. Please remember. Before moving on to the next uh, task, please restore the field table to its original state. Run the following commands. So by default, it operates on the field table. Right? We didn't specify the table. Okay, we need to uh, work inside the router. Okay, so inside the router. F in flush IP tables set up the default policy to accept one output, otherwise, we will not be able to uh, access it uh, if you uh, configure your order remotely. Dash P uh, input chain. Also accept both. Sorry. Okay, then you can check what rules should be removed, and the default policy is uh, the default policy is changed to uh, accept for the output. Certainly for that forward. Except for the input chain, except for the forward chain, we didn't uh, touch this one. Output chain policy comes uh, except, and uh, the rules are all removed. Another way to restore the states of all the tables is to restart the container. Here you need to find the ID, right? Docker restart container ID. Uh, we completed uh, task 2.8 now or task 2.b. Protecting the internal network. Set up firewall rules on the router to protect the internal network. This one. The internal network we have three uh, containers. 192.168.60.5.6.7 uh, 
yeah, all three of them we need to use the forward chain for this purpose because the router sit between the outside network and this internal network so we need the forward chain in the router the directions of the packets in the input and output chains are clear the packets are either coming into for the input or going out for the output this is not true for the forward chain because it's a bi-directional packets going into the internal network or going out to the external network or go through this chain to the forward chain to specify the direction we can uh, add the interface chain using this dash i as we just uh, checked that is a zero is the interface to the outside network and is one is a uh, interface to the inner internal network right? here you can use dash i to specify going out from the interface dash i going in from the xyz interface the interfaces for the internal and the external networks are different so you can find out the interface names via the IP editor as we just did a moment ago now in this task we want to implement a firewall to protect the internal network to point B we need to complete these uh, restrictions outside hosts cannot pin internal host also host can pin can pin the router internal host can pin outside host or other packets between the internal and external networks be blocked everything else that between the internal and external networks should be blocked this can be implemented using a diff default policy here is all about pin so you will need to use the dash p smp option to specify the match options related to smp protocol so to find the help i type dash p smp dash h to find out all the smp match options here is example Drop the SMP echo request. That's a the panel to the forward chain. That's P SMP protocol is SMP. SMP type echo request. That's J job. Okay, now let's uh, first find out how to use it. In the router, uh, currently I'm inside the router. IP tables in the in the containers the autocomplete does not work so it's a good idea may we work outside the container right we work uh, outside the container ip tables dash p icmp dash h to find all the uh, match options here you can see uh, all the match uh, options for this uh, smp protocol That's a lot. Okay, here it is. You can find online for more detailed information. That's it. Print out this uh, app information. This is the default policy. 
open, check, delete, insert, replace, list. Source destination interface dash I and match. Example type name match SMP type or it's a code type of code. In our task one, we know what kind of type of code as NPR has, right? These are the valid types, echo, reply, any destination, and reach point, and so you can find uh, with an uh, online resource, for example, uh, Wikipedia. So we can check the table inside the router. For help, you may uh, get it from anywhere. Forward dash L dash M. Does not exist. No, it's not called forward, it's a chain. So the table, which table we uh, we need? By default, either we will add to that forward chain for us automatically. And you see, here is still in that uh, field table, right? If we don't specify it. So we don't specify it. The uh, app table just list out. Policy input forward output just list out the field data. Okay, now let's uh, based on this example how do we specify the rules. Outside hosts cannot pin internal hosts. The outside host, it will go to the router through the interface is a zero. So we need to specify that interface, right? IP tables, we follow this one. Dash A, the panel door to the forward chain. Dash P, ICMP protocol, ICMP type, echo re request, dash J, job, Dash I is a uh, zero. Then all outside host will not be able to pin the inner host because they all the jobs when they come to the router, right? But under you can check the table here the SMT type 
they will be dropped. And we didn't see a is a zero spider here. Uh, spider is a zero here. We didn't see a Let's verify it. We open a uh, share of the external one. This one is an uh, external one. Right? We also need to uh, open a host in the inner network. So, the inner network, let's try this one. Host one. Paste here. This is the inside one. No, this is the outside one. The outside one, one to pin. Let's pin the router. Right here, the, the router IP address. Paste here. It's able to pin the router. Now let's uh, pin the inner host. Here this is the inner host. Okay, you see the stop. It cannot pin the inner host. Right? It didn't get any uh, reply. Can't you see stop it? Now the second door, outside the host can pin the router. We already see it's able to pin the router. Right? It's able to pin the router with this one. But it cannot pin in the host. Now in the host can pin outside the host. Did the inner host pin the outside host? Work right, you didn't uh, specify any uh, doors to drop with the package. Internal host can pin the outside host and all other packets between the internal and uh, external networks should be blocked. So, to specify block or other packs, we need to set up a rule accept the, the package sent from in the host to uh, in the outside host. So similarly to this uh, similar to this uh, door app tables append the door to the forward chain. Now this interface is the interface to the inside network of the one. Dash P ICMP ICMP uh, type. Now is echo request, right? Dash J accept. So this is send out a request packs to the outside from the inside host. We still need one. When the outside host reply back, they need to be able to uh, come to the inside host. Tables dash a four dash i does reply from outside network. It goes through this uh, interface zero p smp 
type. The type is a echo reply. We also need to accept. Otherwise, the inner host will not be able to uh, receive this uh, pin reply. Here actually we can uh, remove this one to accept uh, any uh, reply. Let's add it. Then for others, for any other protocol or the package, we need to drop it. We know by set up the default policy. Right? So IP tables dash p to specify the policy forward dash j job when we specify policy with oops I make a mistake we don't have dash j okay now let's check the rules in the table Here we have the policy for the forward chain, the job. Eight is a request, right? Zero is a re uh, reply. Now, when you check these two rules, One is job, the other one is uh, accept. We didn't see the difference, even though we know they specified on uh, different interfaces. Could we uh, show the interface? Here, how do we show the interface? For example, dash i, just a guess. Maybe we need to check the menu. App tables how to specify the interface. Let us show the interface. way just as a go. Here you need to go through to find it. This is quite tedious. App tables, little tools, and the interface. Here is a full interface. Otherwise, we will not be able to see dash b for the verbose mode. So, those guess dash i lowercase i does not work. In the router, dash v. Okay, now you see the interface is zero. Right, the job not make sense. You accept this one. Otherwise, you see to control the output. The, these two, they are contrary to each other. But that doesn't make sense. Now everything makes sense. Okay, now we pin the outside and pin the inside host. From the outside host to pin the inside host does work. From the inside host to pin the outside host it should work. Right? 
And for others, how do we test it? For other stuff, we use telnet. All others should be disabled. Telnet to inside host. You see that does not work. Telnet from the inside to outside host. Also that doesn't work. We just can't just see to stop it. If you don't remember this IP address, we can always check here. Check this list. These are outside host, host A. Inside the host, we have host 1, host 2, host 3. I just uh, checked host 1. You can check uh, any of those. Host 1, host 2, uh, host 3. Uh, now let's uh, control C to stop it. Here, control C, stop it. Inside the router. So, can I this task? Work as uh, I expected. Now, when you run this uh, task, please remember to clean the table or restart the container before moving on to the next task. The way to clean it, uh, use this way. We only have uh, modified that uh, forward chain. So, when you want to clean it, here we only modify the for forward chain. That input we didn't uh, touch it, output we didn't touch it. So now tap IP table slash F. Here it's cleaned. And uh, the default policy here for the forward is job. We want to change it back to accept. App tables policy change forward. Policy is accept default policy. Then we can uh, check, top check, list out. Right, you see uh, the forward chain policy changed to accept, and all those rules are removed. This is a uh, task uh, two point B. Please remember your rules and screenshots demonstrate that your firework works as expected. You need to go from outside pin from outside to inside here. Outside host cannot pin the kind of host. Show it. I will show all this stuff, right? Outside host can uh, pin order. Yes. Internal host can pin outside host. Yes. Or other packs between the internal and external networks should be blocked. We only use it to verify it as an example. Other services, for example, web services, secure share service, they all should be blocked, but we only uh, test one. Now, task uh, 2.c protecting the internal servers. We want to protect TCP servers inside the internal network. More specifically, we would like to achieve the following objectives. All the internal hosts run a tenant server. We already know that, right? Outside hosts can access the tenant server, not the other internal hosts. Here, this is what we need to uh, complete. We would like to achieve the following objectives. Outside hosts cannot access other in internal servers. Internal hosts can access all the internal servers. Internal hosts cannot access external servers. In this task, the connection tracking mechanism is not allowed. 
and we will use it in a task file. Here, we need to find the match options like this, as we did for ICMP, right? Dash H to show the help. And the following example allows the TCP packs coming from the interface it edge 0 if the source port is 5000. So again, we use this one as a template to complete uh, all these uh, file tasks. And this one, we don't need to specify anything. It just asks the DOM to use the connection tracking mechanism. So only this one, two, three, four. We need to set up the lower and uh, demonstrate uh, worked as expected. We want to come up with an idea how to uh, verify it. Again, we work on the border, the forward chain. For the internal uh, host run internal server, here we only let them access this one, not others. Before we apply those doors, we can see uh, the telnet uh, to all those uh, servers. For example, this file dot file did work, right? Seed D E S uh, exit six. Seed DES. It also worked. Exit for the last one. Seven. I don't know why we need to wait several seconds. Seed DES. Okay. All worked. And the inside host certainly can access telnet, the outside one. Right, or what the demonstrator one over there? So, because those zoos are cleaned, this time we'll be able to access them. See, DES. You can see from inside to outside, it's quite fast. Uh, from telnet from outside to inside, we need to wait several seconds. Okay, now inside this uh, border, let's set up the rule. Here, this means uh, we need to accept those TCP packets sent to this uh, host on this port number 23. We can follow this uh, template IP tables dash A forward dash I is zero from outside to inside dash P is the source port here at destination port D port two twenty three dash J we accept. We also need to specify uh, that depot. How about uh, the address? How do we specify the address? You can find uh, with that help, or you can find online. Specify use dash d. Only uh, this, uh, the first host, host one, this one. Okay, this is uh, a destination IP address. And in this case, we need to accept it. D 
flag not allowed multiple so let's see what the error over there here when you specify dash p tcp dash d port number is need to be grouped together and this dash d you specify in front of dash p tcp So, protocol TCP port number 23-D put here. Multiple dash D. So, what do you say they have multiple dash D? Here I have one dash D, here another dash D. So when this name is longer, we need a dash dash, top dash. So that's not the, the reason why this one does not work. So I just guess, it looks like my in intuition does not work. Okay, put it like this. Now it accept it. So this one, when you use dash dash d port, maybe it should also work. Now outside host, not other internal host will use a default policy to get rid of all other situation. Now outside host cannot access other internal servers. Use default policy. Internal hosts can access all internal servers yeah we set the policy in the router so it, this is does not matter right? internal hosts cannot access external servers so we can drop Here, this access it means a uh, telnet or, or all the services. Here, it didn't say also have uh, access the uh, telnet server. We suppose here they all talk about uh, telnet servers. If we suppose there are alternative servers, then we can specify TCP protocol and uh, with port number 23. So we want to allow internal hosts to alternate to all cannot. Uh, access external servers, so we need to drop it. IP tables dash a forward from internal to out to outside. You need to go to this uh, interface, interface to the internal network. The source is from all inside uh, so if we specify like this to specify all source uh, app address that's not a good idea right? we want to use a default policy here, for this rule, it only go to the destination. How about those uh, reply from the 
server from this server to the outside world. So we didn't specify a reply yet. So we still need to specify a reply. A reply, so it from the inside to reply back to the outside. So those reply packages from inside, so it need to go through this interface. And the source from the inside server. Protocol is TCP. Now this time is the source port, the reply, right? 23. Dash J also accept. Otherwise, those outside server can send uh, telnet X to the in internal host dot file, but they cannot get a reply. So we need to specify this one. So the outside uh, host can get the reply. Now we can use a default policy to drop any other packets. So this server here, internal server, external server, just mean uh, anything else. Not only a telnet, you will use a set up default, pol default policy to drop everything else. IP tables, IP tables. We want to satisfy the policy. The default policy for the forward chain to drop any other uh, package. Since we dropped any other package, then the internal host uh, cannot access external uh, servers. Let's list out those doors. Here, the accept destination. Any outside host go to the internal host, this host, to this destination port number, TCP, it worked, it turned that into our host, this host, right? the internal host. And all those reply from this host, and from this uh, telnet server, source port can be able to pass through the router. So which means it will, uh, this will work, not other internal hosts, because we only specify this dot .file host. For anything else, we will be dropped by this uh, default policy. The default policy for the forward chain is drop. So which means our host cannot access other internal hosts. Internal hosts cannot access external hosts. Now for three, for three, do you think that the packets would go through the router? Not necessary, right? For example, we can uh, turn that to another internal uh, host for from a dot file internal host. For example, dot six or dot seven, dot six. No, it worked. C D E E S, exit. We we didn't. Uh, okay, we checked this uh, one. Let's uh, also check others. We didn't check others. Here, I want to just check all the internal hosts can be uh, can access or other internal servers. Right? You see it worked. Seed. DES. We didn't uh, specify any uh, rules uh, to drop the, the internal packets right? from one internal machine to another internal machine. Here is uh, just a uh, specify uh, rule pass through the router. So intuitively it should work. So you may need to check uh, from 
for example, dot six to access this dot uh, file or from dot six seven to to X telnet to dot uh, six. How many combinations do you have? You don't need to try uh, all those combinations. We have if you want to try all of them, we will have six uh, com combinations, right? From dot file to dot six to dot seven, and from dot six to dot file to dot seven. From dot seven to dot file to dot six, if you want to uh, exhaust all those uh, combinations and uh, directions, actually required permutations, then you need to uh, verify all those six uh, cases. It's not necessary. The three, just check one is is, is good enough. Now we need to uh, check uh, verify one, three, and four. Internal host can run, uh, outside host can only access this uh, dot file. Yep, this is outside one. We access uh, tenet, try to uh, turn it to dot seven. Uh, it is say trying. It uh, does not work. Uh, Ctrl C, stop it. Six, just trying, does not work. Ctrl C, stop it. Only file can be accessed. Let you see it. Uh, it worked to this dot file. See it? D E S. Let you see it work. Uh, try exit. So this one is uh, verified. Not other internal holes. Dot six and dot uh, seven. Cannot uh, access other internal servers outside holes. So for this case, how do we verify other ser internal server? Here, just telnet server. For other server, here you didn't say any uh, protocol. For server, we have a UDP server and TCP server. To simulate a server, we can use a uh, netcat, right? NC lesson by default uh, is. It work as a TCP server. You can use LT as a TCP server, LU as a UDP server. And uh, try port number. It will specify any port number. Ninety ninety. Here is inside my dot file. Right, this is my dot file uh, in, inside host. It's listening on that port number. Now, if you want to access from the outside world. Here, also, host cannot access other internal server and uh, any uh, service in include that dot file. So we can use NC to connect, right? To connect uh, to that uh, dot file internal server. Here is NC. How do we connect it? Destination and port number. And see the internal host port number ninety ninety. Type anything. We check the server side. We didn't receive any connection, which means it cannot connect to a. Uh, inside server. Here it uh, means any other service other than a telnet. Can you see? Stop it. You can also run an uh, NC uh, server on dot six and dot seven the inner uh, house. Yeah, can you see? Stop it. You can also try uh, LU UDP service. LU. Then the outside you can. Here, how do we specify UDP and TCP? Do we need a dash C and a dash U? By default, is a dash T, right? It's a TCP server. Here, here a TCP server protocol. Dash U. I just uh, guess by in intuitive. You may uh, check the online manual. 
Okay, we'll see it cannot uh, connect. Uh, on this side, nothing connected. Can you see, stop it. Can you see, stop it. To make the career, we can open to a uh, internal host. New tab. Docker share, for example, that uh, dot seven inside host. Host. Uh, let's try this host two. Right now, this host two. Uh, this ho host. Host two is dot six inside dot six. The uh, host one is uh, inside dot file. We can run uh, UDP service. Then from dot six inside dot six, you can use nc dash u to connect to that. Uh, Here I, I didn't see it's connected, right? the internal one. We didn't see it, it says uh, received. Hello, I received hello of that. So which means uh, it's connected and it worked. We know uh, UDP is a connection less. That's why you didn't see it accept a connection. That's the kind of stuff. But we see it work, right? Let's see, stop it. We can use LT for TCP. TCP is a uh, connection oriented. Okay, this time we use dash T. Here it also didn't say receiving because I didn't use a, a V verbose to output some information. Have hello, enter, and you see you received a hello. It worked. Uh, can you see stop the server? Here press enter, you see it's uh, closed. So the internal host can access all other internal servers. Internal host cannot access external servers. Based on the rules, based on the rules inside the the router, it's obvious, right? The default policy is drop any other stuff in the other package. So then you need to uh, verify it. And run, and we wanted to run uh, a UDP service and a TCP service and uh, try to access from the inside host and both. Uh, Oh, here, sorry. Here we are trying to access the inside server. Now we need to run a server outside. Dash LTV. We want to see it. If you want to see more information, add a uh, V. Verbose. Listen, add port number 9090. Here is the outside dot, dot file host. Is this one. So you need to remember which tab is which. Here, this is my host A for this one. Now it says listening on this uh, 990. You can try from any inside host to try to connect it. I run a TCP server. So we can use nc-t to the outside host. Ninety ninety. Uh, you may uh, want to type a hello to have a look. Press enter. Then check your outside 
still listening, you didn't receive anything because all those packets are dropped by this uh, router. By the router. So we verified this one. Internal host cannot access external servers. So can you see stop it? Can you see stop it? So this is how do we, we verify one, two, three, four. After we set up the the rules, but I strongly suggest before you set up the rules, try to set up these uh, servers inside and outside. Set up these servers and access from inside and outside host to see before you set up rules, they should work. After you set up those uh, firewall rules, they will not work. I think that's a more comprehensive demonstration. Here I didn't demonstrate before I set up these uh, firewall rules. Okay, again, after you are done this task, right, the task is done, again we need to flush out these uh, rules and uh, change the default policy to accept. Here we only change this uh, forward chain. Type table dash f. Do I need to specify uh, other parameters? Let's go back to our look. That uh, clean here. This way how to clean it. I have type of tables. I have a type of yeah. I work inside the router, so let's make sure you all the rules uh, you set up inside the router. Clean the rules. Oops. Okay, now the rules are flushed. We need to change the default policy. Oh, that forward chain back to accept. Actually, you don't need to do this because uh, for lab file is complete. We will stop all these uh, containers. For lab uh, 6, which means you will restart your container. All those uh, rules will be flushed or cleaned. So we control D to uh, just get out of all these uh, shells. You press control D, control D. Okay. Here I run DC down. You see these machines, these containers are still running. Run DC down. Power off all those containers and remove them. Okay, they are all removed. Now you can type control D to close all these uh, terminal windows. Okay, that's it. Okay, we complete all these tasks. Uh, two point A, two point B, two point C.